Hello, welcome to the second session in this module and in this session we're going to talk about data ethics. So in this session we will cover the principles for data management, some of the principles for data management and have a look at some of the ethical considerations in the handling of data and a look at also uh, we also look at some of the practices that can help us ensure we adhere to the data ethics. So what is data ethics? Well, ethics refers simply to the best standards or agreements of right and wrong that guide what we should do or on a particular thing or situation. And this, and this could include the rights, obligations, benefits to society, fairness, or specific features of individuals or operations. In data management, there are also standards and agreements that we need uh, uh, to consider and these include examples uh, for example existing standards and norms or understandings about how we treat share and store data and also we ought to consider the agreements that um, we ought to know and consider the agreements that have to be established between users of data and also agreements between providers and users of data so for some of the existing standards in data management are uh, uh, really uh, are embedded within the principles of research integrity and this guide the, uh, the this guide the, the generation use and management of research data one of the principles uh, uh, for data for for data management therefore is the principle of honesty and this when it comes to data it means that we ought to be honest in the in the data generation and processing procedures and have this well documented and it also means that we convey valid interpretations and conclusions from our research data on the principle of thoroughness and excellence in research practices this means that we collect data that is relevant that is relevant uh, to meet the objectives of the study and it also means that we ensure we check and ensure that the data that we are collecting and using is of good quality and that all the procedures that have been put in place uh, to ensure this quality are well documented in the data management plans and protocols. The other principle is on the transparency and open communication. And this means that we ought to document all the data collection, cleaning and analysis processes and be ready to make them open access upon request. And the principles on the care and respect for all participants and subjects of research, it means that we need to protect uh, confidential data about people when needed, and also adhere to any legal and ethical requirements in the handling of data about people. And lastly, on the principle of, principle of uh, accountability, it, is, it, it simply means that researchers have to adhere to all the four principles in relation to data and be accountable for, uh, uh, to any of the, to the violation when there's any violation in the principles um, that has been identified. So apart from these standards and principles, there are also agreements around ownership, sharing and use of data for example, agreements between users of data. There are questions uh, in these agreements that have to be sorted. For example, who will own the data? How will the team that generated the data use it? And for how long will they use it before sharing with others? So an example of a data sharing agreement form is included in these resources and you could have a look and see how, uh, how it is. And there are also agreements with providers of data. Uh, for example, if data is not about people, then we ought to get the permission of the owner of the object of study before collecting data from that object. And when the data is about people, then we need to get uh, their permission and they need to provide informed consent for the, for, before we start collecting data from them. Okay. So apart from these um, standards and agreements, we also have to, there are some common concepts that we ought to understand in the handling of data. And this helps us in the handling of data, especially from people. 
and they enhance the principles of transparency uh, of care and respect for research participants and one of these concepts is our personal data which is sometimes referred to personal identified information well this refers to any information about, uh, that can be used to identify a person either directly or indirectly examples could include a name an identification number a location data um, an online identifier for uh, to one or any of the factors uh, that could be physical, genetic, uh, cultural, uh, that could uh, could be linked to that person. And the, uh, a related concept to this is confidentiality, which refers to that condition in which a researcher knows the identity of a research subject, but takes measures to protect that identity from being discovered by others. And it therefore means it's that protection of the personal identified information of a research subject. And it is a normal... Um, it's a common requirement for any data that is to be made open access. Um, and a similar concept to this, but different, is anonymity, which is a condition in which the identity of a research subject is known uh, is not known to researchers. And examples of these cases of anonymity uh, are found in the ballot polls and also during the online bug surveys and online surveys uh, uh, through survey monkeys, etc., where the identity of a person is unlikely to be to be known. And a very important concept in the in the whole of these concepts is the prior, is the prior informed consent, which is the knowledge of and approval in advance by uh, by a person on the use of their resources and any associated knowledge. So in this, uh, in this consent, we ought, uh, before giving this consent, uh, in this consent, we have to describe the purpose of the research, what is involved in participating in the research, any benefits or risks, how the data will be used, uh, and how the data will be stored and used in the future, procedures for maintaining confidentiality, details of the research, including uh, the funding source who is sponsoring the subjects, and contact details for researchers, example, the institutions where the researchers are from. So this should be given before someone gives such approval on the use of the resources or knowledge. And uh, lastly, the other uh, concept or aspect that we ought to consider is intellectual property rights. and uh, this is uh, the legal protections given to people over their creative endeavors and usually give exclusive rights to their use uh, to, to those creators on the use of their creation or discovery for a certain period of time. And these intellectual property rights could be considered at different levels, for example, uh, from the, at the country level, uh, the rights around the use of genetic resources and traditional knowledge or at institutional levels, which include the rights from all the research, uh, the rights the institutions have of, or, uh, for all the research outputs and data, and also their rights for researchers on publishing and authorship. So, how can we ensure that we remember and we um, enhance these ethics in the handling of our data? So there are some practices, and one of these practices is data management plans. Uh, so a data management plan is simply a document that outlines the various aspects of data management uh, during and after the project has ended. And this data management plan enhances the accountability of researchers in data management by helping them to positively think through the principles, uh, the agreements, and, and also be able to incorporate the data policies um, in the planning of their data management. And um, more funders are now requesting for data management plans focused on open data uh, as soon as the project uh, proposal has been approved. So it is a, a practice that we ought to adapt to in practice. Um, in practice. And examples of individual and project level data management plans are provided in the resources under this session. The other practice that can help us enhance this data ethics that we, we have looked at is data quality assurance, 
which is um, that systematic process of reviewing data for inconsistencies and anomalies and anomalies and it does help us to adhere to the principles of thoroughness and excellence in the generation and use of research data so for some of organizations this could mean that data is peer reviewed by others in the institution organization before it is published or in some organizations there might not be this systematic process however as individuals we ought to take measures to ensure that um, uh, we check our data and also uh, that the data that we are using and collecting is of good quality and so the aspects or concepts around this and the skills will be covered um, in the module two and module three of this course so you have to look out for that and um, this process of data quality assurance should begin from the very beginning of the research and continue during the early stages of the data collection processes and and during the entire process of the of the research so let us allow for some questions upon um, from what we've covered so far. <laughs>